Hello, and welcome to this overview of Guiding Technologies GAINS software. GAINS incorporates expert knowledge of applied behavior analysis, and like a navigation system, provides instructors and caregivers real-time process and decision support that's updated on the fly based on their learner's performance. At the same time, GAINS reduces the burdens associated with data collection and streamlines analysis. Today, I'm going to be overviewing a few key features of GAINS. We'll start with the therapy program setup process completed by the behavior analyst supervisor, and then view the guidance and data collection available on tablets and smartphones. I'll show guidance for discrete trial teaching and task analysis, plus data collection options for frequency, interval, and duration data. We'll also review a few of GAINS' many graph and reporting features. As we go through the GAINS functionality, I'm going to turn off my webcam but I'll turn it back on for the Q&A portion at the end of today's webinar. All right, today we're gonna to start on the GAINS website where supervisors can add and personalize instructional program guidance. Each supervisor does log on with their own username and password. And after logging on, supervisors can select from their assigned students and add program guidance from this therapy page. From this trial-based tab, we can click the add new button to add program guidance for discrete trial or task analysis programs. And we'll start by adding a discrete trial program for our student, Sam. From the program category boxes up here at the top of the screen, we'll select an imitation program and choose gross motor imitation. From this targets tab, we can select the targets we want to teach and we'll choose four targets today. The blue B shown here specifies whether or not we'll assess a baseline. We can click that B to turn the baseline off, but we'll leave the baseline on for our programs today. Um, from the therapy settings box down here at the bottom, we can specify some additional um, criteria. We can determine the number of targets we'd like to train at the same time. And we can also specify how many trials to complete per trial block. And this is the number of trials before the GAINS program will automatically exit the program and go back to the student's home screen. Additional settings allow us to specify whether we'll apply mastery criteria to our least prompt or with our starting prompt and lower. Moving on to our criteria tab, we can specify mastery criteria for baseline and acquisition. Starting with baseline for today's demo will require 100% correct across three trials. And for single targets, we'll specify that we want 75% um, correct across a minimum of eight trials. We can also specify when to move up and down the prompt hierarchy. So here we'll require just one correct response before decreasing the prompt intrusiveness. And we'll also request that or require that the student complete one um, incorrect response before increasing the prompt intrusiveness. And then we can just click on this add to path button and this will show up in the student's path um, here that we can see. And this will also be available um, on the um, app in the tablets and smartphones. Next, let's add a task analysis or TA program. Again, from these program category boxes at the top of the screen, we'll select um, our putting on glasses program for Sam. From the steps tab, we can select the steps we'd like to target. And then from our selected steps, we can remove steps. We can um, change the order of steps and we can also specify which step to target for teaching. Additionally, we can specify the prompt level for each individual step um, if we so need to. In the therapy settings box at the bottom of the page, we can choose the type of chaining procedure and today we'll stick with a forward chain. And we can also specify um, when the student will move up or down the prompt hierarchy um, for each step. And for today, we'll require a single attempt on a single day before changing um, the prompt for a given step. And we can also specify the goal percentage for that and we'll require 75% of steps being completed correct. And that will include our target step. Other settings that are available um, in this therapy settings box include, for example, what we might do if we exit a TA program prior to completion, we can either have the GAINS app start a new TA attempt or resume the previous attempt. Um, in the prompts tab, we have the option to remove, um, add back in, and also change the order of prompts um, as needed. Once again, 
Once again, we'll just click this Add to Path button, and that program is now available in Sam's Path and also available on the app for instructors. Moving on, we can um, customize some time-based programs by clicking this time-based tab and then add new. And from this page, we can add both interval and frequency recording programs. And so from these program category boxes at the top, we'll start by selecting play and leisure and then a peer play program. And for this, we will um, select both the independent play and peer play responses from the available responses box. In the therapy settings, we can choose use intervals and recording to turn on interval recording, which opens up some additional options for us. We can specify the number of intervals to include um, in our program and also determine their duration. Here we'll do five intervals with 10 second duration. And you'll note that as I change the interval duration, this total program duration updates automatically. We can also specify whether to include, um, to assess a mastery criteria. If we say that, set that to yes, then we have some additional options that become available. So for this program, maybe we wanna require that um, peer play occurs in 80% of intervals across two recording periods and we'll require them to be consecutive. We can also specify which response will be our target by clicking the little mortarboard hat icon and making sure that mortarboard hat is highlighted. And then clicking add to path makes this program available in Sam's path and also available on the app. Let's click add new. And now we'll set up a frequency recording program. From the program boxes at the top, we can choose um, early skills and our manding program. And now we can choose spontaneous and prompted bands. Because we are gonna be um, doing frequency recording, we use, use intervals and recording to know. And then we also specify that we do not want to assess mastery. And we'll leave our program, program duration set to five minutes. And then we just click add to path and that program will also be available in the app. Now let's trans transition over to the app to see these programs in action. Now for our demo today, I'm using this emulator and this is just a way of running um, an Android tablet on my computer. Um, so what you're seeing is gonna be identical to what instructors and caregivers can access on their app or smartphone, but it's just gonna be operated uh, with my mouse and keyboard um, instead of a, a tablet touch screen. And so from this app, instructors and caregivers can receive guidance that's updated in real time based on their learner's performance. And from the student's page, selecting Sam's trial-based button opens up his path. Here we see um, the programs shown on the left-hand side and targets in the middle. And we can see the gross motor imitation program and the putting on glasses program that we customized, as well as the matching identical program that was already available in Sam's path. We can start with our putting glasses on face um, program and the position glasses on face step is targeted. Clicking on that, um, clicking on that program opens up setup and clicking the next button is gonna start instruction for each step. You can see that the unfold glasses step is first and that is at an independent prompt level. To record a response, we can click anywhere in this large button to record that response. And if, um, and clicking correct automatically proceeds to the next step. However, if Sam does need more help, we can click anywhere in this minus button. And we see that the next um, prompt level is added um, to give Sam some additional guidance. If Sam's able to successfully complete that step with, with this additional guidance, clicking the plus button proceeds to the next step, which is also an independent. And moving on to the fourth step, this is clearly marked as our target. And this has a physical prompt, which is um, position or position glasses on face. And if we record that as correct, we have the option to comment on those trials. We'll skip commenting on those trials for now and go back just to look at one quick setting that we can adjust. So what we just saw was brief guidance, and this can be really helpful for someone who's a little bit more familiar with Sam's programs um, and how we run them. But if we have an individual who maybe needs a little bit more support, a new instructor or someone that just needs um, that more detailed guidance, we also have a detailed guidance setting. And we'll just go ahead and save that setting and go back to access that position glasses on face program to see that um, more detailed guidance in action. 
So now you see we again start with setup. And here we see this first step um, with a lot more um, detailed guidance available. And this can be very helpful again for instructors that need just a little bit more support. So this is textual guidance. We also have the option to include text-to-speech for someone who might want to wear um, headphones um, to hear the instructions um, spoken, and that can be turned on or off um, in each program as well as through a global setting. Now, if Sam um, does not need any additional support through this um, program, we can just click those plus buttons and you'll see that now when we get to our target step, it's proceeded to a model prompt. And that's because on the last um, run through of this task analysis, um, Sam got 75% of steps correct, including our target step. And so this guidance again is gonna update automatically for all instructors or caregivers who have access to the app. And we'll go ahead and record um, a correct response for that. And let's go ahead and leave a comment for this set of trials, just maybe noting that Sam made great progress today. And as soon as I click the save and exit button, that comment will be available to all instructors and also supervisors um, on the app. Those comments can be accessed by clicking on this icon button and you'll see the comment I made is available here. And when there are new comments that have not yet been read left by someone else, that will be noted with this little green circle on that comment icon. So I can click this comment icon for the matching identical program. And we see that there are a few different comments that have been left. And the newest comment is highlighted green and also flagged with this word new. And that helps draw the attention um, to the new comments, the ones that are gonna be most relevant for someone who needs to run these programs. So now that we've run through our task analysis program, let's transition over to our discrete trial program. And we'll start with our clap hands uh, gross motor imitation. You'll see again, we start with setup. And here we're starting with baseline, as we indicated in the app. Um, we have the basic setup and clicking next, we'll start the instruction for each um, trial. And so this is a, an imitation program for clap hands. And let's say Sam does well on the first two trials, but doesn't imitate on the third trial. If Sam misses any of the three um, trials we included for our baseline, we see that the baseline is not passed and Sam immediately proceeds to acquisition trials with the GAINS app. We start with a full physical prompt here and clicking this plus button is gonna move us to a partial physical. And so because we specified a single trial to move up or down the prompt hierarchy, you'll see that it's easy to move um, and there's clear instruction and guidance with regarding the prompt level. Now recording an incorrect will move us back to partial physical. We also have the number of trials completed shown in the upper left-hand corner, as well as the percentage counting to mastery. Now, so far we haven't completed any trials at independent and we're only counting our independent responses toward mastery. So now that we're at an independent trial, if Sam records, um, if we record that Sam had a correct response, we see that that percentage counting towards mastery is going to increase. And we can kind of continue um, to record those responses. And you'll see that once we hit the eighth trial, we're finished with that, um, that particular uh, target for today. And we'll choose not to comment on this set of trials. Now going back, we see that our lab hands program was run today. We still have our tap table program, which is marked as new because it hasn't been run yet. So we can open up tap table. Now let's say that with the tap table imitation for the um, baseline, Sam gets all three responses correct. We'll see that the, this particular target is going to end as soon as the baseline is mastered. We won't comment on that set of trials, but we can see that tap table is immediately replaced by stomp feet, which is also noted as new. And then moving on to mastered, we see that tap table is showing up in Sam's list of mastered programs. Let's also take a look at Sam's time-based programs that we customized in the app today. Let's start with the peer play program. And this was an interval recording program and it starts with some brief instruction about what is going to happen um, during this program. Clicking the next button is going to start with the first interval. Um, and we also see the total number of intervals displayed in the center of the screen, as well as the amount of time left. Clicking anywhere in one of the buttons is going to record a response. 
And you'll note that when I click on peer play, it's highlighted in orange. And that's because peer play is our response that's um, targeted for mastery. However, if we click on independent play, we'll see that it's highlighted green and that response is not targeted for mastery. If I need to change a response within an inter interval, it's really easy to just click on the button um, for a different response. And then I can also undo to remove a response. If I need to pause, I can click the pause button at any time during an interval. And then when I click resume, that will restart the most recent interval. Once the total time for an interval program elapses, the data will be submitted um, and the program will end automatically. Um, and we'll have the option to comment on those trials. Next, let's take a look at our frequency program, which is our manned program. This again starts with some basic instruction about the program. And clicking next is going to start our um, frequency recording. The total time for this program is displayed in the center of the screen. And because this is a frequency program, every click on a button will add to the count for that response. If I do um, click on a button and need to undo, I do have that undo button. And I can also pause my frequency recording program and resuming that just starts the timer immediately um, where I left off. Another feature that's available for all programs is this pin button. And clicking that pin button saves that program to access um, at any time while I'm in the app. And so I can go, I can access those active programs um, that are pinned by clicking on the active programs button on the students page. And then here I see that Sam has one active time-based program. And we can see that that man program is running in the background. I can easily open that up from this page to record a response and then pinning that program will take me back to my last page here, which is Sam's um, time-based programs. I can also pin trial-based programs. So let's take a quick look at that. We can open up one of Sam's um, matching programs here. Let's do match ball, field of two. This also will start with some basic setup. Clicking next, um, we'll begin the trials. I'll record a correct response here. And then I can pin that and clicking the back button takes me back to that page of active programs. So now I can easily open up um, my MAN program to record, for example, maybe a spontaneous MAN, and then pin that and go back and run a trial of my matching program, which I can also pin. In addition to these um, active programs, I can also open a behavior recording session for SAM. And here we have basic frequency and duration recording. And I'll start a recording session for Sam, and you'll see that my start time and the elapsed time for this recording session are shown at the top of the screen. And I have options to add um, various behaviors. So maybe for Sam today, um, he engaged in flopping. So I can record an instance of flopping. I can also record duration for flopping. And now while I'm recording um, duration for flopping, I can also record an instance of biting others and also an instance of property destruction and potentially attach some duration to that as well. So I can record multiple, multiple behaviors simultaneously. So um, it's also easy to end my recording just by clicking this pause button. And then clicking back takes me to my last page, which was the active programs page. So here we see that Sam's man program is running. And we also see that I can easily access the match ball field of two. And because this button is green, we know that we have an active behavior recording session in progress. And so now I can go back and forth across my different programs, recording a response for my matching program, recording maybe a spontaneous man, and then also recording maybe an instance of writing others. And so in addition to recording these behaviors um, and these data for Sam, I can also open up um, another student Maybe for Joe Demo, I want to start a behavior recording session and record an instance of hitting. And then I can also open up some of Joe's um, programs as well. Maybe I'll do um, an instance of receptive idea food and open up candy field of three. I'll record um, a response and I can pin that. And now going back to our active programs page, we see that we have active programs for Joe and active programs for Sam and active behavior recording um, sessions for both of them. And now it's quite easy to move back and forth across both students and their various programs to record responses as needed. So as you can see, it's quite simple to move um, and pin across various programs and recording options. 
Once I'm finished with Sam's programs, I may want to record a session note. And I can start a session note at any time, even while other programs are running. Just by going to the sessions button and clicking modify session note. The sessions button is available here on this active programs page, and then it's also available on my students home page. Clicking modify session note is going to give me um, a session note template that can be fully customized on our website. Here I just have a brief session note for our demonstration purposes. I have some information here. Um, this might be insurance information, and this information can actually be pulled in from the student's record on the website. And so I'm pulling in some basic information about uh, maybe Sam's father who has insurance. I can also include things in my session note like the session code or CPT code. Um, maybe this one's group treatment. I can also specify my um, strategies and techniques used, and this is going to be like a multiple select, and this can be fully customized with whatever um, options make the most sense. You can see here that my MAN program just finished, and we've actually already uploaded all of those data to the server. Next, I have the option to pull in any program data that were run today. Um, so I might want to include all of these, or maybe I don't want to include my matching program, in which case I can deselect that and you'll see that the matching program um, is no longer included in my list of data. I also can pull in behavior data um, that were collected during my behavior recording session. And you see that these data are also easy to input into my session note. In addition, I may want to add some um, narrative content about maybe the strategies and techniques that I used. So I can just click this copy option here and go ahead and paste that information into my progress and barrier section. So maybe I can um, describe a little bit more about how Sam responded to those particular strategies and techniques. Finally, in the session note, I've included a place for clinician and client and guardian signatures. So these are going to be just some simple um, electronic signatures. So I might enter in my name and credentials here. And then I can just sign electronically and save my signature. And then we also have a place for um, the client and guardian signature as well. And I believe we said that uh, Mr. Sample was Sam's father, and he's also going to provide his electronic signature. Once both signatures are saved, you'll see that a timestamp appears, and then I can go ahead and finalize and submit my session note. So now that we've um, seen some of the capabilities of the app, let's transition back to the website to look at some of the graphing and reporting features. To access graphs and reports, we just click on this reports tab um, from the website. And we will have to log in to the reports website separately. Logging into the reports website starts us on the skill acquisition monitor, which displays a program overview. And selecting any of these programs is going to open up more detailed um, data about the targets that are within that program. And selecting any of these programs is going to open up more detailed trial by trial data. And you can see we have um, details about the instructor, the location, and um, the kind of overall percentage correct, as well as the prompt and the response for every trial that's been conducted for that target. And then we also have the option to open treatment charts. And the treatment charts are going to be sort of traditional line graphs with either percent independent or percent correct along the y-axis, and then date and um, consecutive uh, trial blocks along the x-axis. The behavior monitor is going to show the rate data here along the left y-axis and duration data along the right y-axis for any behaviors that were um, included in the behavior recording session. So the circles here show duration for flopping, and then the squares are going to show um, the frequency, both per minute and the overall count. And then we also have a number of other reporting features. For example, this one day trial visualization, I think is a really nice feature. With this, we can look at all of the trials that have been conducted in a single day. 
with the time along the x-axis and the prompt level along the y-axis. And the different colors show correct versus incorrect. And I think one really nice thing about this is it can help identify fatigue or pain points within a session that you really wouldn't be able to see if you were using just traditional um, paper and pencil data collection because you don't get so much um, granularity with the time. Um, so these reporting features and, and many others um, that you can see a brief sample of are available um, on the website as soon as data are submitted during a session, um, which I think is a very nice feature. And so that concludes the highlight, I think, of the um, demo portion of the webinar for today. Um, and so I think we now have some time for questions. Um, and I will go ahead and turn my webcam back on. I know one of the questions that came up was about the session notes. Um, and so I can just kind of pull those up maybe. So first the session notes are gonna be available here on the website. And you can see um, all the session notes that I've included for Sam. Um, and just clicking the show PDF button is gonna open um, a PDF of the session note with all the information that I had included um, when I was filling this out on the app. So program and the program data, um, behavior data, and then of course those e-signatures that we included um, during the session. And then if I want to customize the session note, um, there's this session notes tab um, along the top on the website. And here we can either edit the template, um, add a new template or copy the template and create a new one. So we'll do that. This one I've been calling my brief session note, which is what I use for our demos. I'm um, just because I want it to be quick and easy during um, that process. And so there's a number of really nice features that we can include here. One is that we can make any of the fields required. Um, during the demos, I don't do that because I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> but I think it's nice to be able to do that, especially for, you know, if you have therapists or instructors and you want to make sure they include some information in their note. Um, it's really easy to just make that required. And once that's clicked, they won't be able to submit that note. I can also go over a couple of the different types of um, data fields that we have. And so you'll see that um, my pair um, name that I've included, this would be you know, the, often the parents of the child, um, if you're working with a child, and they're the ones that have the insurance. And so you see here for autofill, we have a few different options to pull in information from the client's records. This would be um, you know, like the payer name or their parent's name, the insurance ID number, and then the location of the session if you know, they're typically having sessions at home. And then we also have, um, again, our single select. So maybe we just want to select a single CPT code for a session. Um, that's very easy to set up. And it's really easy, too, to add new items into that. So maybe I want to do, um, you know, I've included most of the main ones that I've worked with, but maybe something like 97159. Um, we could just add that really easily. Um, Additionally, um, we can have the multiple select. And so here I've got a really long list, but we saw in the app that that just shows up in a really nice big box. So it's easy for the RBT to select as many or as few as they need during a session. And then I think the um, other piece that's really nice is being able to pull in data from the session. So you can have um, the device data drop down here it gives you access to either program data or behavior data, and that will autofill from the session. Um, we can also specify that certain fields are only available with certain access rules. So maybe you want to have a supervisor complete a session note, but um, you, know, you, want, you want them to have different fields than an instructor. You can just go in um, and set certain fields to only be available to the supervisor or the admin. Um, and then if I wanted to add a new field, that's really easy too. I can just click this add new field button um, and I have a number of different um, options here for what type of field that might be. So again, the session notes are fully customizable. They can match whatever session note the company or the um, insurance requires. So that's a nice feature. Thanks for going through that. Um, so if anyone has any other questions, you can put them in the chat box um, or you can also email us afterwards. Um, it's just info at guidingtechnologies.com. Um, or check out our website and there'll be a lot of information on there as well.